Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I uploaded a video, but now I'm back. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been reading a lot of French comic books, especially by Mobius. And um, I really wanted to do something inspired by his art. I really admire him and I just wanted to try something in that vein. I had this picture of like a futuristic cowboy in my mind for some time and I decided to draw it. Uh, here I'm, I'm working on the animal that he hunted and I wanted it to look like game. I didn't want it to be just an earth animal, so I did work on the design a bit, but I wanted it to read as gamey. And for the design of the cowboy, I just had this picture of like an insect, like cowboy, like a humanoid insect. It just came naturally. Sorry for the jump cut there, but uh, my camera was having some issues and I salvaged the, <laughs> the footage that I could. Um, for some reason, I since from the beginning, I had this image of like the insect being very skinny and then having cowboy boots. I, I thought that was kind of funny and a bit interesting. So I, I added those. For the design of the vehicle here, I, I was having a hard time coming up with a, a design that I really liked. Uh, and then I looked into insects, especially beetles. I love the way they like open their shells to reveal their, uh, their wings. And um, I thought I would include that into the design. Uh, you can see that here, of course, but I will make more illustrations based on this character. And in some of those, you'll be able to see the, the vehicle in action and how I incorporate that element there. Um, but I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out, especially the vehicle. I like the character a lot. I'm planning to do more with him. Uh, for now, I don't even have a name. So you might be able to help me with suggestions. Uh, I added those little rock formations in the back. I'm usually really bad at conveying distance like that. I, I really struggle with that, but I think in this case I was quite uh, successful. I think it does look like those are very far away. Now, I don't usually add so many details with the ink. Uh, like texture lines and things like that because I'm going to paint it with the watercolors anyway but being that this was inspired by Mobius I thought that I would give it a bit more detail there and in the end it turned out really well I thought it might be a bit too saturated both the details with the ink and the watercolor but it actually turned out quite well. I'm very, very happy with with how it turned out. Uh, so here I'm uh, just adding little texture details to everything. With the design of the gun, that rifle, I wanted to go for something a bit like Barbarella. So the stock, it has these little swirlies around it. It's not as exaggerated as Barbarella, but um, I like the way it turned out. It's not just a normal earth rifle. It's it's a different type of rifle. Now here I'm adding the sand. I I had thought about doing like a reddish color for the sand, so it might read a bit as an alien uh, planet. But in the end, I decided that this would be Earth in the future. So. I, I went for this ochre for the sand. I could have used masking fluid to cover up the figures so I could just go over it, but because it's sand, I think the little strokes actually help with the texture. And it's not such a big area that I need uh, to mask them that it's gonna be like problematic if I do. Like in the sky, for example, I 
I masked it off camera so that I could just uh, pass the brush over them without having to worry about the figures being painted blue. Now one thing that you'll notice is that I didn't tape the paper down and this is a problem usually we tape them because as you can see as I'm adding the water and the paint it started to buckle up it started to roll over itself and that's because it's not taped down I usually do tape them or if I'm using a block it's not necessary but uh, the problem here was that I ran out of tape to be honest and with the whole pandemic it's kind of difficult to just oh, I'm just heading out to buy some tape so I had to make do in the end it wasn't that bad because it's just it's this big area of blue and it didn't crease or anything so it, it didn't affect the paint as much I wanted to do a streaky cloud sky I really like clouds I think they make the sky more interesting now for this little guy here um, I wanted him to read as gamey you know because it's an animal that he hunted I didn't want it to look just like a deer but I didn't want it to look so alien that you couldn't recognize what it is so I added details I added uh, elements of a deer like the antlers the the general shape but I also took elements from an art back just uh, did the snout a bit uh, shorter and I thought it looked pretty well I added the tusks you'll see that I added this also this reddish color to the gun and to the boots and that's because one of the cool things about watercolor is that because they're basically transparencies whatever color you lay first every other color is gonna have that hue there so if I just added brown directly to the white or if I just added the the gray of the gun it would look very different so I wanted this reddish undertone in it uh, especially with the boots I, I think that's very common in cowboy boots and um, with the gun I wanted it to look a bit maybe rusty if you see with the sarape that he's wearing, I that's just burnt umber, very thin with a lot of water straight onto the white. And if you see, it looks almost like ochre. So I didn't want that for the other elements. Here I'm adding some details to the clothes. Um, later on, I'm gonna do some more weathering so it looks used. For his face, uh, I, g I was inspired, of course, by a fly. You can tell from those eyes. I was going to give it a proboscis, actually, like a fly does, but it's kind of gross. <laughs> so I decided not to because this guy um, is supposed to be friendly. And uh, so I just gave him mandibles. I, for, for some reason, mandibles aren't, don't look as gross as a proboscis. Here I'm adding some of the gray in the gun. And as you can see, the gray straight on the paper on the white looks very very different and that's what I was going for with the gun I wanted it to be pinkish gray so it would look like a different type of metal or maybe that it's a bit rusty and for the vehicle I just wanted more of a standard gray I'm adding that to the underside and just adding details here and there I tend to go by colors, it's a lot easier. You mix one color and then any time that you need it, you put it there. And while you wait for one color to dry, you do another one. As long as they're not touching, of course, because with watercolors, if they touch while they're still fresh, they'll mix. And sometimes you want that, but most of the times you don't. So here I'm adding a bit more of that gray to the beetle uh, because it's based on a beetle the top was very simple and the bottom I wanted a bit more detail 
that is hidden by the shell, but I didn't want it to be cluttered. Uh, but I thought it turned out pretty well. It has just enough details to read as a bit more um, believable. Now, with watercolors, something that I like to do is to creep up on the colors. So as you can see right now, I'm adding a very, very light green and uh, it's, it's very, very little pigment, a lot of water. And the idea is that you slowly build up the colors so that you can get the color that you want. With watercolor, it is more difficult to correct things if you make a mistake. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people are a bit intimidated by watercolors. Uh, but as long, I find that as long as you creep up on the colors, you don't have that problem because if you make a mistake, it's not as difficult to correct when it's very, very light colors as if you just lathered it on, you know, it's, it's a lot easier and you get a better effect that way too. With oil painting, uh, it's easy to correct something. You just scrape it off the, the canvas or paint over it. Not that oil painting isn't difficult or it, it, it doesn't have its complexities, but it's just, it's just different from watercolors. Uh, I like, with watercolors, I tend to work backwards in a way, like I start with the lighter colors and then you build up to the darkest colors. I know that some watercolor artists do the, the darks first and then they, they do the lights. I find it easier. And that's the same principle here with the grass uh, because I left the ochre behind it. It's green and it, you ha it's grass, but it has this ochre tint, which makes it look like it's burnt out. You know, it's, it's drying. If you've ever been in, an, in a very dry area where there's grass, you can tell it's still kind of green, but it's beginning to dry. So that's the type of thing I wanted to have here with the grass. And there I'm working in the distance and um, basically it's just going around. Honestly, with this uh, illustration, it took me uh, several hours over a couple of days. And it was mostly just uh, slowly building up the colors. As you can see, now the green is a lot uh, more intense. Here, I was trying to do a little iridescent green for the beetle. I have done it before, but I didn't do it properly this time. I should have watered the whole thing first and then added the colors, but um, it didn't turn out the way I wanted, so I just wiped it off. And as you can see, there's still that yellow background. But I thought at the end it kind of looked nice, doing a bit darker, a more bluish green around it. And it still gives off this kind of iridescent effect. Not exactly what I was planning, but it turned out fine. I, in the end, I liked it. Um, it's just, I was trying to do a bit more of a different hues sometimes you can see with with beetles you can see a lot of different colors in the way the light ref refracts of their shell that's kind of what i was trying to go for but uh this turned out this turned out well in the end over here i'm adding some rust to the metal in the in the vehicle um I mentioned that I had been reading a lot of French comic books, like science fiction, and there's a phrase that, that I know that they, they mentioned, and it's something that I know also informed Ridley Scott when he was working on Alien and Blade Runner, and I find it's, a, it's, a, it's genius. Uh, it's the future is old, you know, it's, it's used it's lived in it makes it feel more believable it's not the 60s uh, pristine future uh, but it's it's used it, it makes me feel how in the real world we have areas where it's so 
advanced and everything is super clean and, and it looks so nice. Uh, but then there's areas where it's so dirty and there's barely any maintenance. And that's kind of what I was going for here because this is uh, basically a nomad character. I think I, I was thinking, I was thinking about Snufkin from Moomin. Uh, so he's kind of a nomad, he goes around. So I, I, I would guess that he maintains his vehicle just whatever he needs for it to, to work, basically. Not, he's, he's not gonna be able to keep it in pristine condition roaming around the desert now. Uh, for that tent, I, I took inspiration from an actual tent that I found on the internet. It's supposed to be solar panels, but I really like the way those solar panels have this uh, like insect shape, almost crustacean. So it kind of went with the theme. And uh, so here's the f uh, basically done. It's just minor details. Like I said, the future is old, it's used. And that's what I'm adding, the shadows here some dirt, rust, and it really gives it that feel that I was going for. I, uh, I'm very, very happy with the way it turned out. And I hope that you can join me the next time. Of course, uh, I have my Patreon, so if you would like to support me over there, you'll be able to get uh, this picture and also other extras that you can check out over there. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.